welcome back to rocking with the robins i know it's been a minute guys but this is finally going to be the video for our puppy you're going to get to meet her i know you've probably seen little clips of her here and there so i have a spot reserved for her which she never gets to get on the couch um, but a little bit later she's outside right now you're going to get to see her so of course i'm going to say this because we're trying to grow our channel here so i want you to comment like subscribe most importantly so you can see more videos like this and also hit your bell notifications so now that the business of this is all out of the way let's have a little fun so i know i kind of alluded to some of this in our journey to getting our puppy video and if you have not seen that please go back and watch that video that video is more so a video of how we were feeling in preparation of getting our puppy, um, kind of how we kind of got to that decision, where our minds were at uh, when we got her. And so that's what those clips are about. I thought it was important to share that with you guys so you could kind of see it in real time. And our intention was always to show you guys in real time or almost real time, if you would say, um, right after we got her. So of course we made an announcement video when we did get her as a puppy, but literally, it's been a year, okay? Um, and not a year, she's actually one years old this month. And so I was like, it's time to do this video. It makes no sense why we have not done a Meet Zuri video. So originally I had planned to have Carrie in it cause he the pappy um, and my sister maybe. But as far as a sit down video, I wanted to do this with you guys so you could kind of get an overall sense of meeting her, what she is like, um, what kind of dog she is sometimes people don't know what kind of dog she is and all of our expectations hopes goals all of those good things for why we got her so like i said let's get into this video and hopefully you guys will drop some comments below about future videos of what you want to see regarding zuri zuri is our now one year old doberman she's still technically considered a puppy puppy um, but dog. Um, so Doberman Pinchers are known for several things. Um, they are technically a medium sized breed, um, but a lot of people consider them to be a large breed just for the sheer amount of pounds and the size. And a lot of people are typically intimidated um, by them. And I can understand if you're not a dog person, this is not the dog for you. Like this is not a good starter dog for most people. Um, and what I will say is there are a lot of great Doberman content creators out there that I watched myself when I was getting my Doberman puppy. I will, for me, um, a little backstory, which I've always wanted to share, which I might've shared on her page um, in the past, is one of the reasons why I always loved a Doberman so much is because I had one as a child. So we had a rescue Doberman when I might've been like, 13, 10, somewhere between the ages of 10 and 13, because I actively remember um, having this dog. And so my dad has always been a dog person. I think that's where I get it from. My mom, not so much. She can deal with animals, but she definitely thinks, and specifically dogs, she definitely thinks they're meant to be outside, which like I said, to each person their own. Uh, she thinks they're meant to be outside and that's it. And she had two you know, small children to raise at some point, teenagers to raise. She just didn't have the time and she wanted to make sure she was able to provide the commitment that was needed to have a dog. But for me, I always loved them. And so my dad also loved them too. Um, and so that was kind of something that was always fun to me was having a pet. Um, and so kind of going back once again, I had a Doberman at a young age and she was one of my favorite dogs. Her name was Ginger. She was a red Doberman. Um, and so Dobermans come in a couple different colors as far as the breed standards. And so those include the black and rust, which that's uh, Zuri's coloring. They also have fawn, which is kind of like a, like a, a muted down, I'd like to say it's like a gray brown. I don't know how to best describe it. I'm gonna put maybe some pictures in here so you guys can see the references. Um, so I said red, black and rust, fawn, and then also there are blue Dobermans as well. Um, and so they're, that's really honestly more of the grayish color they look, you know. Um, and so those, and then they also have albino Dobermans. Once again, this is a lot of detail. I'm not gonna go into the history of the breed, but albino um, Dobermans usually have a lot more health concerns. Um, they're not something you want to breed for. Um, and so sometimes there are, you know, 
puppies that come out that way just naturally but people that are just out here like oh that's the kind I want um it doesn't really work that way if that makes sense um just like you know it's a genetic kind of occurring thing and sometimes people will search for that and that's not necessarily um something you would want to do just because of the health um, aspects of it but of course those dogs deserve love too they're just going to take a little bit more love in some of the health concerns that they have now another thing i will say is that one of the things that kind of held us off from getting a puppy um, was that right around the time that me and carrie got married my uh small yorkie poo toto um, which i loved i got him when i was about 16 so at that point in our lives we had had a little hiatus from having a dog um, because our rescue dogs like Ginger, we had a dog named Chunk, we had a dog named, uh, what was her name? Uh, was it Sheba? We've had a lot of different dogs. And like I said, most of them are rescue. So we got them as adults. And so that's why we had so many. Um, because over time, of course, our dogs go to heaven. So sometimes these dogs were four, five, six, seven. Like when we got the dogs, they were much older. Um, and so... One of the things that held me off from um, getting another dog was that Toto was the only dog I had raised from puppy stage up. And he was, Toto was my dog, okay? my I really, really wanted like a small toy dog that was all the rage. Um, when I was a teenager, I wanted another dog. And so I begged my dad and one Christmas morning, I got a puppy. I boo-hoo cried, mind you, um, because I think I opened up a box and he had given me like a stuffed animal like a like a stuffed animal I think and I was like oh how funny dad like my dad's kind of a prankster um, I was like how funny you know I really wanted a dog this Christmas but then right after that he brings me the puppy in a little tote bag and it was the best um, I used to coach dance when I was like in college and things like that so I would take Toto with me I won't say everywhere um, but he would come with me to practice and all of that so I just loved 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 that dog um, of course, you go to college, you have all these different experiences. Fortunately for me, I lived locally, so I was kind of able to still tend to him, but probably not as much as my mom would have liked because I was in college. Um, but, you know, he was my dog and I really, really loved him. And I was kind of looking forward to having that everyday experience with him again, like having him in a home with a yard, you know, just living out the rest of his life. He was probably about let's see when me and Carrie met maybe 10 or 12 and then by the time um he passed away he was about um maybe 14 or so I I have to calculate but you know he lived a full life but it just sucked to me that I wasn't able to bring him into my new life you know because Carrie had met Toto like he knew that hey Toto's coming with us whenever we get married so that kind of made me really sad and it was a blow to me and I was like you know what I don't think I want to have another dog anytime soon if ever again um just from that experience um and so if you are a pet owner you understand what I'm saying like he was there through the bad breakups the the horrible things you know just just the good moments when I got into college like all of those little moments he was there for and so it really really um wow I'm getting emotional it really really hit me hard when I couldn't bring him with me and like I said dogs are around for for not just for comfort they're here to live a good life with their owners um but he really was a comfort to me you know kind of going through those teenage years and all of that so anywho um I didn't know if I was going to be ready to have another dog I just was like nope I don't think I want to do it you know we want to start our family I just don't I don't think I can do the whole dog puppy stage having them here and then you know just all the things that come along with it the emotional attachment I would say um but then the pandemic hit and then me and Carrie bought our house like literally right at the same time another video for another day um and so I was home every day and Carrie was going to work and I was home and like it was just it felt like the right time that's exactly how me and Carrie would describe it and if you saw in our other video that's what we were talking about like it just felt like this was the perfect time for me to get a puppy because that was the other concern like when you have a puppy it's like kind of like having a child it's not the same by any means but when you get a puppy it requires a lot of attention especially in the very beginning when you're trying to get them trained get them crate trained get them potty trained getting them where they need to go and having a big dog like Zuri that requires training and a lot more effort exercise requirements things like that 
I just really had to be ready to make that commitment. And so it just felt like the perfect time. And so um, funny enough, Carrie never knew the story of Ginger. And the other great thing about Ginger is she had Christmas Day puppies, which me and my sister woke up one day. She had the puppies and we were like, oh, my God. Um, so it was like, I don't know, just a fun childhood memory to have that. Right. Um, and so in doing all of these things and feeling like we're ready and doing the research, like really going through our brain, like once we decided we might want it, um, kind of doing all those steps, we decided we were ready. But the other funny component that I was uh, try trying to tell you guys about earlier was that Carrie um, was trying to figure out what kind of dog we would get, right? And so we, he was saying, oh, we're going to get a puppy when we get married, blah, blah, blah. It's good test run, you know, all the, all the things people say. And I was like, well, what kind do you even want? Like, you know, I didn't think we would agree. And so he's like, oh, I have the perfect dog that we should get. He sends me pictures of the dog, not our dog, but pictures of the breed. And he's like, this is the one we should get. And I said, oh my God, did you know that I had a Doberman when I was younger and she was one of my favorite dogs? He knew I had lots of, not lots of dogs, but he knew I had dogs throughout my life and you know, I was a dog person. Um, and he was like, no, I didn't know that. So I don't know. It just felt like, what? How did you pick this dog? And so one, he did want a big dog. Um, two, short hair. So the maintenance of, you know, a lot of some other big dogs have a lot of hair. We didn't want, my husband is very clean. He didn't want hair everywhere in the house. Um, two, the protection side of things. Like having a larger dog that is well-trained, mind you, um, can be great. Like if I'm out walking or whatever, you know, he wanted that factor. Um, and, and at the time we had been doing like four or five mile, walk, mile walks a day, like um, in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and so that was kind of our big um, thing. So I was just so excited when he said, oh, this is the dog we're considering. So right after he did that, that's kind of when my heart like just opened up just a little to the idea of having another dog. And so I was like sending him pictures like, OK, what do you think of this one? OK, what do you think of that one? Because I was getting into it now because at first I was like, no, no, no. But once we decided we were getting a Doberman, I was kind of like, OK, I'm I'm all in. Like, are you all in? I was kind of like testing him. Like, are you all in? Like, OK, here's all these videos. Do you understand what this means? Um, and he was all in. So that's kind of how we arrived at that decision. We saved our money. We decided, okay, this is what we're going to get. Um, and this is how much it costs to train her because our other agreement with getting Zuri was that if we get her, she we already got to have the money in the bank for the training because a big dog like that, you cannot just like there's liability involved, you know, like you just can't let your dog run all willy nilly. And so that's one thing you will find about me and Carrie. We are very serious about Zuri's training. Um, we practice with her every day. So if you don't have the time commitment to do that, and I'm not saying it's an hour every day, but there's at least 10 minutes of every day, even in small sessions now that she's, you know, fully trained with her obedience, um, that we're doing all of her skills every day. You know, she works when she she's a working dog. That's literally the type of um, category that she's in when it comes to the American Kennel Club, all of that. Um, and so that is what they do. They are dogs that have high prey drives. So when they see something running or things like, like they want to be like, hey, I want to go follow that. I want to go chase that. So you have to be able to control your dog. And maybe in another video, if you guys want to see like, what kind of things were you looking into when you were getting your dog? Um, we can share that maybe later. That would be good. But ultimately, that's kind of how we arrived at the decision of what kind of dog. Um, and that's how we got to this point.